Okay, so just to kind of recap, now that we know what our flow rate is, and assumably we can figure out what our horsepower is, then we can really narrow it down once again using these pieces of information, flow and head, uh, to figure out exactly what pump it is if you wanted that information. Um, so now what I want to do is we've kind of talked about the theory, I guess, um, of how to figure out what pump you've got using a variety of different methods. I've kind of worked up two example problems that kind of uses a combination of the methods to figure out what we've got. So we're going to just work through a couple of example problems. I figure that might help um, just because we're pretty conceptual at this point. So let's get to work. All right, so here we are. Um, we got just a sample problem, like I said. Uh, so here's what we know. We know we've got 240 foot depth. We looked at the control box. It said one horsepower. We looked at the pressure tank. It was a 62 gallon pressure tank. All right, so now what we need to figure out is what pump we've got. So the missing information, of course, unknown static water level, unknown recovery rate. So we don't really have any good things that are pointing us in a direction um, to know exactly what our flow rate is. So what we need to look at is we've got the pressure tank here. So the first thing that we want to do to get us a little bit more information, let's check the pressure in this pressure tank. Wow, magic, it's 38 PSI. So we know we're, we're on a 40, not a 40, 40, 40, 60 system, which as we know equals, we're gonna round it 140 feet ahead. Okay, so we've got 240 plus 140, and of course that factors for just a tiny bit of friction loss. Um, so we total those up together, we're at 380. So that's pretty good. Now we've got at least our TDH, or uh, an example TDH, figured out. We know it's one horsepower. So you might be surprised to know that we can actually figure it out from here. Um, so since we know it's one horsepower and 380 feet TDH, we look at some pump curves and um, we find that the 10 gallon a minute, we're, we're just starting in the middle, the 10 gallon a minute, not a good fit. So we'll show you that now. The seven gallon a minute, just backing our way up, working our way down, because the 10 gallon a minute was not big enough. The seven gallon a minute, perfect fit. We'll show you that one right now. The five gallon a minute, way too much head. That one is not perfect. We'll show you that one. So, based on that information, it's basically safe to say that we are dealing with a seven gallon per minute pump, one horsepower motor. Wonderful, on to the next problem. Okay, so here's the next problem. This one's pretty cool. Uh, 60 foot well depth, by some miracle, we know that it's 60 feet deep. Um, unknown static water level, unknown recovery rate. We don't have a control box that we can find. Um, I don't know what the pressure switch is set at. The cap's lost. Um, do have an 81 gallon pressure tank. So it might seem like you can't figure out what the heck pump you've got, but let's, let's figure it out. Okay. So no control box. How do we address that? Well, we're going to take a resistance because in this situation we're going to pretend that the pump's dead and uh, we can't run it to take an amp reading so we're going to take a resistance reading so we take our resistance reading we get 3.3 and my pin is dying so it's that's unfortunate i wonder if i have another one three oh look at that Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so no control box, but we took a resistance reading. We got 3.3 ohms. Refer back to that chart in the first section of the video. I don't know what the time will be, but um, that means that we have a three quarter horsepower. So now we know this. And we can assume that with a pretty good level of confidence. Now, of course, one thing to remember, I'll throw out a caveat. Uh, one thing to remember is you're going to add resistance the more wire you've got. So you kind of use this as a placeholder and then see if it checks out with the rest of the information. 
Now, we're only dealing with 60 feet, so we're really talking about a very, very, very marginal amount of added resistance. So I would be more confident in this being a three-quarter horsepower than I would be if this was, let's say, 250 feet. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but again, the AIM manual, that very darling book, uh, will tell you what the resistance drop is based on the wire size uh, over a 100 foot length and you can just multiply that out to figure out what your actual expected resistance drop is and then you can just add that to the expected resistances of the motor that you're looking for um, so anyhow that's the caveat to this um, i'm pretty confident though in three quarter horsepower uh, because it's not very deep Okay, so now that we know what the horsepower rating is, um, let's see if we can figure out what our total head is. So we're gonna use, we don't know what our pressure switch setting is, but we do have a pressure tank. So I'm sure you know where we're going with that. We're gonna take the pressure of the pressure tank. What do you know? 38 PSI, beautiful. So we know we're at 4060, and we know that our total head, you know, that's 140 feet rough numbers um, and then 60 feet so that equals 200 feet and uh, so now we know horsepower we know the size of the pressure tank which can be handy um, so we know that uh, the drawdown so let's talk just for a second about drawdown now this tank is actually o a little bit oversized um, because your, your tank size is based on pump run time with the objective of running at least a minute if you're three quarter horsepower and less, or at least two minutes if you are larger than three quarter horsepower, uh, up through about, I wanna say 10 horsepower, seven and a half horsepower, um, aim manual, it'll tell you that. Um, but that's not what this video is about. Anyways, so we can actually squeeze a little bit of information out of the size of the tank. I didn't really touch on that, but so we know a 81 gallon tank has approximately 20, 25 gallons of drawdown. So um, we're not over three quarter horsepower. So it kind of seems a little bit like it could be a higher volume or higher flowing um, pump. So what my gut's telling me to do is go look at some pump curves. Let's say, okay, so we've got this huge drawdown of 20 gallons, three quarter horse, so we could actually be looking at a pump that's 20 gallons a minute. And now keep in mind, we don't know the static water level. So I'm just gonna throw a theoretical situation at you. Um, you run into a pump that's set at 100 feet and the static water level is 10 feet. Well, the 100 feet is almost irrelevant if the recovery rate exceeds the pump's flow rate. So you gotta keep that in mind with these numbers. They're not gonna be 100% accurate, um, but they can be very, very accurate. I would say, you know, 95, 98% accuracy. I use these combination of methods all the time to figure out pumps and um, can't really think of a time that it didn't do what they what I said it would do or what they expected so um, but you know throwing out some disclaimers just some things for you to be aware of things for you to think about um, and well depth does not always or pump depth for that matter does not always indicate what your total head is because you're not always adding all of the feet now that does beg the question if they knew the recovery rate which typically they do when they first put a pump in and they selected three-quarter horsepower um, and let's just say 10 feet of static head well a half horsepower could have done 20 gallons a minute at 10 feet ahead if the recovery rate was outrunning the uh, the flow rate of the pump so it's arguable that you can kind of at least with some confidence assume the guy who was there before you kind of knew what he was doing or at least you can put some weight in that thought process um, that they used a three-quarter horsepower because maybe they needed to go deeper um, or maybe not so anyways let's work this out just a little bit farther <clears throat> so we do like i said we know 200 feet three-quarter horsepower we're looking at the 20 gallon minute pump curve let's show that real quick you can see on this pump curve 
it is a, it's a dead miss. If our stat, if our, if we actually need to pump at the pump level, which is uh, 60 feet deep, um, this pump is a dead miss if we're trying to get up to 60 psi. So let, now let's just back way off and go to a 10 gallon a minute pump and see if that one looks like it might be a good fit. And what do you know? It happens to be a 10 gallon a minute pump. It's at a great spot in the pump curve. It will pump the entire range of the curve um, from 40 to 60 PSI wonderfully. And I have a lot of confidence that this would be the right pump. So my vote would go to 10 gallon a minute because a 15 gallon a minute just doesn't make a whole lot of sense um, when you wouldn't be able to pump the entire depth of the well at a good volume. The 20 was just a dead miss. You almost would never use that. That would be kind of silly unless you once again had a really good recovery rate and um, your static water level was pretty pretty high or low, however you want to look at static water level. Um, so there is a little bit of flexibility in these numbers, but mostly they're, they're on, on task uh, or on point. <clears throat> so 10 gallon minute pump, that one fits really good. It would do the entire depth of the well, whether we have a good static water level or not. Um, so it's, it's kind of a safe bet. Uh, some other steps that you can take to kind of assure yourself that that's the right pump is take a look at the size of the home um, and kind of gauge the consumption, the water consumption. Is it a two, three bedroom house? Do they have a massive yard? Do they do any crazy irrigation? Uh, so taking all those kind of little pieces of information into account putting a little bit of weight to them and figuring out really kind of what makes the most sense for the system altogether. And also don't forget if all else fails, just give us a call. We're more than happy to answer your questions and maybe you've gotten some of the information but not all of it and need some help, just let us know, we'll help you out. I suppose that's about all we got for this video. So looking forward to the comments on this one. I'm sure I'm gonna stir up a firestorm um, because it's, kind of all over the place. So uh, thanks for joining us today and we'll uh, talk to you soon.